So there, medical oxygen, setting the, the unit properly, having a calibrated unit, I think, okay. is, is critical there. And uh, we, for instance, uh, on an endo tooth, a hot endo tooth would take some gas, ozone and oxygen gas, and d directly inject it around the periapical area of an infected tooth. Perio is another case. Perio abscess would be great. Okay. Perio pockets were actually bubbling ozone gas through the crevices around the necks of the tooth, maybe 30 seconds per pocket. And our observation is that we basically are not using our lasers anymore. Really? They're sitting in the corner gathering dust because so we're getting good healing. We're getting ozone. as w good or better healing very rapidly, zero pain, no anesthetic required. Periodontal pockets, you're talking? Periodontal pockets, yeah. Wow, okay. okay. So and we're seeing nice resolution of perio, and then the question is how do you maintain something like that? And we're working on ways of getting our patients low level ozone to apply on a daily basis. The units that we're using are far too strong. They're much too powerful for daily use. Right, by the patient. By the patient. Okay. But there are ways of getting them ozone at a low, lower level that is very acceptable for preventing further ingress of the disease and yet not totally disrupting the, uh, the, the uh, ecology of the uh, mouth any longer. Okay. So obviously it takes some training to be able to use these things properly. Well, how, how do we get that training? Well, I mean, you could actually get all of the equipment that's necessary online by yourself and totally concoct some sort of system. It certainly would, though, would not be my recommendation that you do that. We're not going to do that. that. <laughs> no. Well, you could. Okay, we can do that, but, but we're not gonna. There's, there's a lot of studying to be done if you want to do this properly. Okay. And a, a fraction of this is what you actually have to know in order to be use the, using a unit properly. Right. The rest of this is scientific background and, and generally understanding what the science tells us. But we, we spend some time talking about it, but my main thrust when I work with people on getting their units together is how to actually physically use it in a practical way and uh, we, we make them aware of the science that's behind all of this, but we don't spend an awful lot of time with it, and you certainly could. Yeah. Uh, if you have some interest in, along that line, I would recommend you hear Edward Lynch, who is the author of the Quintessence book, Ozone in Dentistry. Okay. But there are really two ways of learning about using ozone equipment in the United States right now. Okay. Us on the West Coast, and if you're interested in this kind of stuff, just email bill at smilestudio.com Bill at smilestudio.com. And we'll try and okay. work something out with you. Uh, on the East Coast, Phil Mollica and Robert Harris are doing a program, and they work with a different uh, ozone generator unit. My primary interest has not been in the United States. It's trying to help other countries that have nothing near the resources that we've got. Right. And as a consequence, the equipment that we're using, although it's not real sexy looking, is very <laughs> inexpensive. And you could do a, a course with us and get the whole functional system for under 2K. Uh, that's under certainly $2, under 2000 You can do the course with you and get the system. Mm -hmm. So you know what to do. Now, how, how long is the course? Two days. In a two-day course, you can understand how to use this, the applications, and be ready to go. Absolutely. We work on all of the applications, not just the gas, we will make ozonated water, and that's what you're seeing here is a water maker. Uh, especially the hygienists can really get by using water only. If for a lot of their applications, you can put it in the ultrasonic, for instance, and irrigate pockets out with the ozonated water. And uh, we also make ozonated water ice, and we make ozonated oils, and they all have their own individual applications. And you talk about that in that two-day oh, yeah. course? When you're done, you should be able to, to do just about everything with it okay. in a rather sophisticated way. And we, we stay in touch with the Ozone Pathfinder group, we call it, uh, throughout the United States, and we're in touch on a regular basis. And everybody comes up with their own uh, ways of using these things. I sure. just heard from somebody who's made a new way of making a cart, for instance, so that they can move the unit around uh, from operatory to operatory. I finally threw up my hands on that and I've got a, a little unit in every room. What you're seeing here is missing the oxygen bottle. There's a regulator and an oxygen bottle and of course you can choose what size bottle you want to use. Okay. We started out with a little file cabinet rolling the thing around from room to room and we still use that but each room now has its own generator okay. in a little drawer and a foot controller and basically the patient doesn't have to see any of that. You just haul a little hose out and then we'll apply the ozone for instance to a, a tooth 
with a little handpiece that has a cup on it that simply goes over the end of the tooth and you just hold it on there with proper suction. The patient's not inhaling ozone, nor are we okay. on a daily basis. Right. And uh, we also have ways of putting the uh, ozone water or ozone gas through a cannulated handpiece. All right. And this can go right, in the, right down into right the perio pocket. pocket. Okay. And uh, we'll do that uh, prior to uh, scaling and root planing, for instance. Great, great. Uh, okay, well, Anything else in particular that you'd like to tell us? And then also, again, where do we get this information? How do we get information on your course? Well, I would say contact me, Bill Dome, uh, via Bill at smilestudio.com. Okay. Um, if you Google ozone in medicine and dentistry, you'll find a tremendous amount of information. Uh, if you want to really read a great book on that, I would take a look at Valio Bocci's book, B-O-C-C-I, Valio Bocci in ozone and medicine and of course tissue is tissue and so what they're doing in medicine applies directly to what we can do in dentistry and the last thing I want to say is that you're not just killing bacteria you're not just killing virus fungi and prions you're doing a heck of a lot more than that Bill thanks so much this is a, glad I this, could be with you this is an area that I think is, is growing is coming and uh, to be a, here with a pioneer in this field here in the United States. Uh, I'm very appreciative. Appreciate <laughs> Thanks, it. Guy. Thank you. Appreciate it. So here's the handpiece that would be connected uh, directly to the gas generator. And there are some foot controllers that we've got that make it a little bit easier. But you don't have to get very fancy to use something like this. Now this also has a thinner one, a thinner cup for smaller teeth. Simple as that. And then the cannula for use in the pocket. This is simply a lure lock syringe connection. So sometimes we'll connect this to the generator and blow gas right down in the pocket for 30 seconds. Sometimes we'll take a syringe with ozonated water prior to scaling and root planing and squirt the pockets out with the uh, ozonated water. Uh, the only uh, caveat with that is if you're going to do any microscopic sampling, you better do your sampling before you put the ozonated water down in there. You're not going to see any wiggling bugs. And it's simply oxygen in, ozone out. Can't get much simpler. We leave these things running all day long. I never turn them off, and the re primary reason is that I want to have my unit calibrated. So if it's turned on, it's going to take a minute or two to come up to speed. I want instant access. I just leave the thing on all day at a very low oxygen flow rate. These things run at like a 30-second liter per minute. So you can go for a week with a small tank. But since it's running all day and we don't want to be breathing ozone out in the operatory, although it may actually be good for you, in small quantities, we don't need that, but we run it into a, this thing, we call a destructor or a catalytic converter. It simply takes the ozone and converts it right back out into oxygen, so what comes out of this is oxygen. You have no ozone odor if it's set up properly.